Well, it's a beautiful sunny day, cold, but sunny in Nebraska. And uh, welcome to session three of carving the preening hen mallard. And uh, in the last session, session two, we kind of roughed, carved the body and got to shape the bird. Today, the fun begins. We start on the detail of the body and begin to develop. This particular bird has uh, some wing exposed and uh, on both sides. And we're gonna wanna develop the cape, begin to develop a little bit of detail in these feathers. But before we get started on that, I thought I'd talk a little bit about reference, especially on a preening bird like this. There's no pattern out there other than the one that I've developed myself. Um, to give you reference dimensions on, well, I want to drop my side pocket feathers. Well, how low do I drop them? What should that dimension be? Uh, what are these feathers doing? And, and uh, same thing over here. Where should that side pocket be? Where do these scapulars, how far, how broad are they across the back? All of that is uh, part of the fun that you've got to figure out, and we'll be doing that today. I have the luxury of having carved one of these birds before, and I would encourage you to take, take some digital photos of your carvings as you go, and just create a little reference library, because that's what I do. I printed these out this morning with views of the bird from uh, different positions, and that's really gonna help me as I work on this bird, establish where these dimensions are. The other thing I wanted to mention is uh, Pat Godden has a great uh, group of reference pattern books and I use the heck out of them. As a matter of fact, if you can look at that, there's tape all over here, the pages have been ripped, there's paint on here, there's cut marks on it because I use these all the time, and it's not to copy Pat's patterns. I don't really want to do that, but it really helps to have, okay, on a common hen mallard, what is the kind of the, the right dimension from the top of the side pocket to the bottom of the bird? That gets me in the ballpark is then I'm transposing on to a totally different pattern, but I know kind of where a typical side pocket is going to lie on a hen mallard and then kind of interpret from that but at least it gives you a starting point on your dimension same here there's a starting point on the distance across the back of the hen mallard and as i'm trying to decide okay what's this hen mallard going to look like i'm going to use some of those reference dimensions from pat's book just to help me get in the ballpark with this premium version of a hen mallard. So I know these books are, I think, out of print, but if you can get your hands on some of Pat's books, uh, I really recommend that. I use them faithfully and, uh, you know, just dimensions like what's the distance between the eyes of a hen mallard from the front? Well, you can trust that Pat is pretty darn close on his dimension, and I'll refer back to that uh, as we go. Anyway, I'm not here to sell Pat's books. He can do that himself, but I have a lot of respect for the work that he did putting those patterns books together to help the rest of us carvers as we're developing birds like this. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to start out by doing some layout work again, and uh, I want to make sure, for instance, that this speculum is in the right place. You know, as I look at the tip of the wing out here and where the front of the wing is going to nestle in the side pocket up here, where is that speculum supposed to be? I also have uh, reference wings from a hen mallard, and I'll refer to those because I'm a hunt, hunter, I've been able to collect specimens over time. 
that's that's hard to beat as in terms of a reference dimension like that. So let's do some layout work here. I'll bring the camera in a little closer and we'll get going. You can see I've kind of sketched in freehand kind of some guidelines where I think things should be. Now I'm going to go to the pattern. Uh, for me, these two spots are critical. They're kind of anchor points establishing how far forward or backwards are those. And this point, if you remember when the black was band sawed out, I sketched that cape on there and there's a reason that becomes an anchor point or I'm calling it an anchor point because I want a dimension from the middle of that cape in back to both of the front of the kind of side pocket on both sides. So I'm going to use the dividers, strike an arc there. I know that uh, along that line, I am going to establish the front of that side pocket and I'm going to do the same thing on this side you can see it tucks right up into the back of the neck there and now I'm just just as a quick check I'm going to do a dimension across I got to look for my arcs here I'll pencil those in so you can see them better on the uh, on the bird I know the cape is going to be about that wide, so actually it's under that neck back there, but on this side it's going to be right about in that position. So this becomes a key point I want to keep in mind on both sides. Also using my pattern, and I know that the side pocket in front comes right up, about right where I had it sketched. And then I'm going to pull the feather group down here. So this side pocket is going to be lower than like I talked about on Pat's pattern uh, because it's not in a traditional, just straightforward position. Okay, so we kind of have some guidelines going. I checked the width across the back. I think I'm in the ballpark there. I've got these tertials positioned about where I think they should be. We'll have some scapulars back here. But the first thing I'm going to want to do is, or at least the way I do it, I want to develop this side pocket shape first. Because if I start up here and I get down to the side pocket, I want to make sure I have enough roundness in this side pocket to really convey softness and a cupped feather shape there. So I'm going to start there and make sure I dig in here far enough to give myself a good round shape in the side pocket and then go from there on up for the rest of the feathers. Same on this side. I'm going to start developing that side pocket shape first. Get that set and then work on the rest of it. I'm going to start with this little quarter inch burr quarter inch diameter. It's got teeth on the end of it as well, so it's a nice tool in that regard. And I'm going to begin to develop depth in that side pocket area. And if you watch right here, the burr actually snags and jumps a little. And that's going to happen every once in a while, but you don't have to be afraid of it. It's just kind of jolting when it happens but it catches the end grain or something and tends to snag a little bit. Uh, but as long as you have good control of the hand piece, you don't need to worry about that. I'm going to be speeding the video up in these carving sections like I did in the previous videos just to speed through it a little bit, just so you're aware of that. Once I kind of get that side pocket roundness, now I'm going back in. Uh, cutting that area down to inset that wing into the side pocket 
and just working back and forth to now I'm going to use a, a little faster tool here, a three quarter inch cylindrical burr, and just takes wood off faster, easier to get that shaved down. Also use it to go back in the other direction, do a little bit more carving and rounding, and I'm creating some feather groups uh, in the during this process to create some interest in shadows in that side pocket area. Just continuing to work that down until I'm satisfied that the roundness of that side pocket looks natural. So you can see I'm going back and forth to develop that area. I'm not too worried about the scapulars above. We're gonna we're gonna get them next, but we want to make sure that wing looks like it's going into the side pocket. And there's got to be enough roundness there to convey that in the carving. I'm gonna jump ahead here so that we can work on the other side as well. You can see I'm using the three-quarter inch cylindrical burr on this side uh, just to do that initial digging in and, and developing the roundness in that side pocket area. It's a little less complex on this side, so I just jumped right to the quicker burr to take that down on this side. Working on roundness of this side pocket as well. We don't want any flat spots in that uh, side pocket. There's nothing like a flat spot to convey uh, something that doesn't look lifelike on a bird. So I always try to avoid any flat spots, keep nice curves. Uh, it, it really helps in the softness of the overall appearance of the carving. All right, let's pause a minute and uh, take a look at what we've got. We've got a little shape in the side pockets now and uh, a little grouping here and here, just in the rough carving. We've pulled this back far enough to get a nice round look on both sides. Yes, there. Now, just need to spend a little bit of time reestablishing where those scapulars are going to come down. Keep our anchor point in mind up there. Wings tucked in back there. And we need to sketch in the speculum here where the wing is going to come down into the side pocket. I'm just rough sketching right now. Same on this side. This side I, is not going to be opened up as much as the other side, but I do want to show some speculum here. So there's some scapulars starting. The wing is coming lined up with that wing tip and then the Speculum gonna lay in here somewhere, roughly. So really the next part of the carving I wanna do is make sure I've got good lines established here. And we're gonna do the same thing above that we did below and, and take this, the wing area down a little bit. So there's some relief on both sides we'll be carving this kind of ridge down in and then taking material out so that wing looks like it's inset like it should be then we'll develop this area back here 
Okay, I'm going to use that quarter inch cylindrical burr again to begin to relieve this area on the top where the scapulars are drooped down over the wing that's tucked into the side pocket. That's, the, that's what we're trying to convey here. I've got one scapular here kind of drooped over the speculum just as a, a little nice little detail once we get to the painting part of this. And now I'm going to begin to relieve that wood in the wing area and take it down. Not a ton, but just enough to cast a little shadow there below the uh, scapulars onto the wing and convey that it's tucked between the scapulars and that side pocket area. Now I'm using the end of the burr. That's why I mentioned it has teeth on the end and in a tight area like this. You have to hang on to the uh, handpiece tight, uh, but that end of that burr can really be a valuable tool in tight spaces. I'm going to speed the video up here again as we carve on this, this area of the bird. Again, since this area is kind of tight, it's hard to get an angle on it. I'm using the, the handpiece perpendicular to the surface and using the end of that burr to take material out. The advantage of a burr is removes material pretty quickly. Again, you just have to hang on to the handpiece tightly. Now you can see that little shadow that's being cast under the scapulars and onto the wing area. Just continuing to work that area down until I'm satisfied that it looks natural. Just a quick shot of that area. Now you can see a little bit of a shadow cast and I'm just working to smooth things so there are no hard ridges there. And then we'll work on the other side in a similar fashion. Now I want to work that primary as it's coming down into the side pocket and also develop the where the speculum sits. I'm using that quarter inch burr again and beginning to dig into this area along the primary line. It's kind of hard to see in that shot, but I'm just carving material out of that area and leaving a hard edge along the, uh, the primaries as they go back and cross. Now I'm using the end of the burr again to take material out of that area along that ridge and blend it down into the covert feathers. I'm going to speed up the video here again so that we can get through this a little quicker. Beginning to work on that area uh, between the the edge of the tail where it meets the body and the rear of the side pocket and the tail coverts. We want these areas rounded. We don't want anything flat remaining in the area. So I'm just doing a little sculpting there. I didn't like the way the coverts were falling on the tail, so I just removed a little material there. That looks better. Now I'm working to relieve the back of the speculum and then take the wing down a little bit so that we end up with a, a carved edge there of the rear of the speculum. I'm going to do the same thing with the front feather group on the front side of the speculum and then take that 
material down as well. So we have a couple of little ridges there that indicate where the speculum lies. We'll do some more detailed carving later in that area. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Begin working that edge and also that uh, junction between the side of the rump and the covert feather groupings that go over the, the tail. And then there's a lot of material I need to relieve out of that area and blend it into the, the top of the tail. Continue to work that area and take material out. And you want to make sure you keep in mind the alignment. You can see I'm a little off on the alignment there with the, the wing tip, so I'll make adjustments to that. Now I'm carving in that speculum on the other side. Just a quick look at where we are and you can see the nice shadows that are falling in that side. All right, I wanted to turn the dust collector off for a second and just kind of take stock of, of where we are. I've, you've been noticing I've used this little cylindrical burr to rough out a lot of the shape and all of this will have to be smoothed and sanded but it really is uh, an effective tool to carve and shape things as you go. Um, you just have to be careful with it because it does have a tendency to catch the end grain every once in a while and it'll jump a little bit. Uh, so just keep control of it. Next, so we've kind of got the things roughed in here. Next, I'm gonna work on this cape area and the cape feathers lay over the back, so they're not... A lot of carvers, I notice, just carve this area way down and leave the shoulders pumped up like uh, muscles. The cape are actually a group of feathers that lay over this area, so I'm going to carve down into that area, leave this area raised a little bit, and round it. And then uh, I'm also going to work on this junction area. These feathers end up wrapping over that, so I'll put a little bit of a relief in that area. Now I'm going to use this three-quarter inch cylindrical fine uh, saber tooth burr and begin to cut down in the center of the back and then flare it out as we hit the cape area. Do the same thing on both sides. This does two things. It results in the cape being raised a little bit the way it should be, and it also puts a little bit of a concaved area in those back feathers so we can start to round the back feathers. Now I'm working on that front of the side pocket area and just relieving that a little bit and defining where things come together in the front there. Just gives a little more definition to that area. Now I'm rounding the cape feathers and we don't want a point in the back of the cape. And I'm starting to round the tertial feathers into that concaved area of the back as well. This will take some time. I'll speed up the video here and you can see that area being shaped. Flip the decoy around, do the same thing from the other side so we create that concaved area in the back, center of the back, and worked around that cape area. Now I'm moving to, to a smaller bit, that cylindrical burr, so that I can use it to shape the cape feathers a little bit. They should be rounded at the back, not to a sharp point. 
and then blending that raised area back into the back the feathers of the back. Just cleaning up a few things and here's here's just a quick look at that cape area so you can see a few shadows there and some nice roundness on the back. Now I've done a little more sketching of the scapular feathers as they come down and meet up with the tertials in back and we're going to want to lower that tertial group a little bit to leave a ridge there where the scapulars meet the tertials on both sides. If I can hang on to my pencil. So we'll lower the tertial group. And to do that, I'm gonna use that quarter inch cylindrical burr and just quickly relieve those rear scapular feathers or create a groove with the edge of that burr. And then I'll go back with the side of the burr and lower the tertial area just slightly. We don't want a huge ridge there, but just enough. At least on this decoy, I'm putting that level of detail into this bird. So I'm gonna blend that groove backwards and the edges of those um, scapular feathers, I'm just rounding as we go. And now I'm beginning to define those tertial feathers, the edges of the tertial feathers. Once the, the whole group of feathers has been lowered, then we can put a little detail into the tertial group itself. This is all pretty quick work and pretty rough. It'll all have to be refined later, but it, uh, it gets things defined. I'm just continuing to work those feathers and and blend things and make sure I've got nice roundness in everything and blending those scapulars into the tertials. Now I'm going to go along the edge of the scapulars on the top of the side pocket there and just create a little bit of relief in each of those feathers and some sculpting of those feathers. This is not gonna be a full decorative bird, but it's got a little bit of carving on it. You can choose not to do that. It's totally up to the carver how much detail you wanna put into each bird. Doing the same thing on the other side, so I won't uh, go through that. I'm just repeating the process on those tertials. Just a quick look overall. And it's pretty quick work to get those sculpted. And then we'll have to do a lot of sanding. All right, we got quite a bit of work done. And uh, I think I'm gonna stop this session at this point. We've done a lot of kind of major feather group sculpting. And it's a good place to stop because what I wanna go to next uh, number one, I don't want these videos to get too long. I want to keep them reasonable in length. Number two, I would like to work on the head now that we have the body kind of sculpted and uh, work on roughing in the head and its position on the body before I get too far into the detail on any feathering uh, going on on the body. So we'll do that next time. Again, if you're enjoying these, getting value out of them, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the subscribe button, share it with people that you think might want to carve, and uh, we'll see you next time.